now suppose you don't know tamil and i have to keep you engaged with in for, for 40 minutes in tamil how do i ensure that you remain engaged so i have to bring in a lot of you know joy into the process even if i am sitting in a remote space i can access the knowledge of the world i have to give you one connectivity two language literacy at a high level and three digital literacy कुछ भी नहीं टीचर्स पढ़ेगी तो नौकरी लगेगी पैसे कमाएगी मैं पुलिस बनना चाहती हूँ एंड डायरेक्टर ऑफ खराड़ी पाथ सो मिस्टर विश्वनाथ इज अ मल्टी फेसिटेड इंडिविजुअल विद बैकग्राउंड इन इंटरनेशनल बिजनेस चिल्ड्र पब्लिशिंग म्यूजिक इन एडुकेशन His business experience of over 25 years spans a diverse range of management roles, from international business to entrepreneurship. He is a passionate individual who loves education, and the same found expression when he embarked on a mission to reinvent language learning pedagogy, based on the unique Indian experience of multilingualism. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Vishwanath. Pleasure to be with you, Deepak. Namaste. Namaste. So, just to begin with, so can you tell us a bit about the idea behind conceptualizing Karadi Path? So, the uh, concept of Karadi Path itself was a bit of an epiphany. Um, we were already Karadi Tales was already publishing audio books for children, which were books and uh, audio cassette at the in the beginning, and then CDs later, and like e-books now. Um, a lot of schools started using uh, Karadi Tales audio books as models for English enrichment in their schools. and this was primarily because you had fantastic storytellers like nasiruddin shah girish karna natak das ushal to etc who had narrated these stories with a lot of music and a lot of audio inputs you know it, it was a it was pretty much you know pro, um, uh, stimulating the theater of your mind in terms of the visualization of the story itself um once we got an email from an ngo in dharavi who was working uh, who had after school uh, you know little classes for children and they said that you know we have been using current details and fantastic things are happening as far as english language learning of our children is concerned i mean they used to hate this and now suddenly you know they seem to be understanding english uh, we obviously were curious and when uh, we went to uh, see what was happening we realized that they indeed were enjoying the current uh, tales sessions very much and when you asked them certain questions they were able to answer what actually happened in the story at a you know reasonably uh, good level of uh, reasonable level of comprehension but we realized that you know they were deriving most of their uh, understanding from the narrator's voice the expressions the music the sound effects the visuals that were there in the book and they were not really relating to the language itself you know so everything other than the language was actually communicating to the children and so the teachers uh, thought that they were actually uh, understanding it because they were able to at least respond in their mother in the local language to the questions the thing we realized then is that uh, you know this was not really the case but what was important is that we went there uh, you know trying to teach or rather the intent was to teach them english but the big uh, realization was that each and every one of these children spoke at least three languages you know they had come from some part of india so it could have been a family from orissa which came to mumbai you know looking for work and then they picked up hindi and marathi so they knew oriya they knew hindi they knew marathi or whatever was the dominant language in that particular section of dharavi dharavi is an extremely cosmopolitan uh, space if you know it you know there are multiple languages happening so you will have a tamil section you will have a gujarati section you will have you know different things happening in this particular space and when the child comes out and has to play basically i have to communicate with a child who does not know my language and in the process of that interaction you know they have picked up two three languages and this really hit very hard because when you look at the indian experience for a lot of us who have uh, been in urban areas and probably moved from one geography to another geography 
for us speaking four and five languages three four or five languages is not considered an achievement you know it, it, it simply is that we have the opportunity yeah, right. so two is considered like absolutely uh, you know essential three is very common four and five are also substantially common and this is not the way the rest of the world actually looks at you know multilingualism for us it is you know it is just to be taken for granted that this is a possibility you know so um i would say that this triggered our entire thought process in terms of the fact that language learning is actually can be very easy the way we are giving it is where probably the problem is and that set us thinking and that is where the initial uh, you know impetus for us to get started on the journey you know and then it was more a case of really intently observing and studying how we acquired the second third and fourth language what were the stimuli what were the enabling circumstances and uh, you very very quickly realize that there are some fundamental principles which are the exact opposite of how it is done in the classroom i mean everything that we do in the classroom is unnatural compared to how the process of language learning actually happens so this was the beginning of the journey i mean it was a long journey but this was the you know trigger or the uh, inspiration wonderful and now talking about your personal experiences so you've been a part of the domain of music children's publishing education and even international business so how does all of that assimilate into the programs that you run at karadi path i would probably say that the international business itself is not very relevant in mm-hmm. the in the uh, overall karadi path experience apart from the fact that it gave us an insight into different societies so we had an opportunity because my wife is an educator we had an opportunity to look at learning systems in different places you know so that was there the international business obviously when you are working somewhere it kind of gives you a lot of understanding of uh, marketing finance business aspects of any kind of an enterprise and so that is an advantage when you become an entrepreneur uh, but most importantly i think the ideas of uh, uh, music children's publishing and language learning are all very intimately interconnected you know because when we when you learn music formally there is a formal pedagogy there is a process you understand uh, you know how these processes work you then make so many linkages in, the, in terms of why musicians pick up languages more easily than a non musician you know so you start studying these or uh, these uh, uh, things a little bit more carefully you realize that you know music is all about listening language is also all about listening and in the process of children's publishing you knew how to engage a listener with you you know the whole idea of storytelling is about you know how do i communicate to you how do i communicate to you verbally and non you know how do i make that non verbal communication so impactful and so effective you know keep you absorbed to whatever it is that i am doing so i think these were uh, uh, i would say that probably the music element of it was uh, very critical in a lot of ways in terms of our understanding to a certain extent the neurology of uh, listening the neurology of uh, music and how it kind of relates to the neurology of language learning Uh, how the brain works in these uh, particular activities uh, and then children's publishing gave us the experience of how to engage children with certain specific things and uh, uh, obviously from there you begin the journey based on your experience around and uh, start looking and observing intently you know studying intently and for us the entire journey was an extremely what you call from field to theory journey. it was not a theory to feel our so our research basically was extraordinarily intense in terms of observation in the field and observing a phenomenon that is already at work so we did not invent multilingualism multilingualism is already there the question is you are now observing how is it being enabled and is it relevant for a uh, transition into formal pedagogy itself so now like you mentioned that multilingualism was already in place in the country Yeah. So, how did you use that to develop the Karadi Path methodology of education, yeah. and how is it that you made it so effective, low cost, and scalable solution all at the same time when you worked around it? Yeah. See, the uh, I think all of us, uh, either at an individual level or at you know we may have observed, have seen children who move from one geography to another. Let us say that I am. Uh, living in Punjab, 
uh, I'm from Amritsar and I, for some transfer reason, I come to Madurai in uh, Tamil Nadu. You know, in a matter of three to four months, I am, as a child, I'm extremely unhappy because I've lost my friends, I have you know, lost my environment and I've come to this alien space where people are speaking a new language that I don't understand. So in the beginning, I am extremely unhappy. But my survival instinct kicks in. And then I start listening to the language. I start listening to the patterns of the language. And people are also all around me, there is Tamil. So which means that all the time Tamil is falling in my ears. And in the beginning, I am largely, we are largely communicating through nonverbal uh, communication. But at the same time, everybody is speaking. You know, so a very, very simple way in which to illustrate this that if you land up in Madurai railway station and you want to go from point A to point B uh, from the railway station to a particular address and you don't know Tamil, you and the rickshaw driver will engage in a successful communication because the context of the communication is very well understood that you are going to talk about the fact that I need to go here, I need to know how much it will cost, I need to probably know how, how long it will be from here to there. The, so the auto rickshaw driver already knows what is it that you are going to ask. You also have, an, have an anticipation. So this is a phenomenon called, so when you build the context correctly, you predict language. So if this child in the mother school wants to find the toilet, you know, the expression on this child's face will tell the other face, other person, other child to say, okay, you know, how do you find the toilet? You know, the sense of urgency or whatever it is, the sign that you do. And in the process of this, communication starts happening. Not necessarily through language, but through the process of non-verbal. In the process of this, as this becomes intense and continuous, what you have is that language starts just building. It could be discrete aspects of vocabulary. It could be several elements of syntax. Because at the end of the day, the easy thing to actually learn is vocabulary. The difficult part of language is actually syntax. And you understand that you know when you actually look at this, observe this very carefully, as to how I speak Hindi, you know, the structure of Hindi is so different from the structure of Tamil, for example. And the two actually don't see eye to eye on so many structural uh, aspects. But you will find that the kid picks all of these up. And you never mix the grammar between one language and the other language. So when I'm speaking Punjabi, I'm using that syntax and when I'm using this. So it is more a question of you know studying this and then saying that now I do not have this ecosystem. Now I need to teach you a language without the uh, availability of the ecosystem. This is the fundamental assumption that you make if your pedagogy has to be valid. You then, uh, you know, say that I have deconstructed this process. How do I reconstruct it for the limitations of the classroom? How do I reconstruct it for a situation where the teacher herself may not be proficient in English? Because if you want to look at a scalable solution from an Indian uh, uh, context, you are not going to find English speaking teachers in all the spaces that involve. Yes. I mean, I may I may be an English subject teacher, but I don't understand and speak English myself. And that is going to be the majority of the cases. Even in an English medium school, a majority of teachers have not had the opportunity of learning English. Well. So with the result that, uh, you know, uh, I have to create new models, both for the teacher as well as for the child, so that, you know, they can actually take this journey. And in many of these cases, the journey is taken together. And so that took us some time. You know, how do I now convert these fundamental ideas. Do not teach words. Do not teach meanings. Do not teach grammar if you want to learn language. The moment you start teaching these things, you slow down the process of language learning. But then how do I create engagement? Because now suppose you don't know Tamil and I have to keep you engaged with, in, for, for 40 minutes with Tamil. How do I ensure that you remain engaged? So I have to bring in a lot of you know joy into the process. Because the urgency of finding the toilet is not there. Yeah, exactly. in the classroom. Their urgency works. You know, so you have to replace urgency with the, uh, because this is a free space. This is not a space where I'm constrained. In the free space, I have to create engagement. So, you know, how do you create the tools? How do you create the processes? That took us a long time. And I would say that while there's a lot of maturity in terms of many of the things that we do, and we have, uh, the results are actually proving that, there is still a journey of discovery that I think is, ongoing at this point in time for us. So Karadi Path basically evolved out of that deconstruction and reconstruction for the classroom, modularizing it in a way that any teacher can easily offer it and then making the tools sharper and sharper, whether it is the fundamental storytelling or the teacher 
support tools, the teacher engagement tools, which are very often in a government school situation, the teacher engagement tools or the models are used directly with the students. In a place where the teacher has some amount of English, she will use it as an aid. In a different place, they will use it directly. And so right now, when we talk of online classrooms for, you know, in the current situation, uh, these teacher engagement tools which have developed over several years have suddenly become very powerful because I am just able to kind of plug it in. So even for a first standard or a second standard child, the Karadipath online classroom is an absolute joy. Every other classroom is a pain to sit and, you know, sit there for, you know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes listening to somebody or even observing a few PPTs or whatever. So, uh, yeah, that is the segue that we had from one to the other. And now you mentioned some of the tools that you've been using. So, say technology is one of them. Yeah. So, and media, the role of videos and short experiential gadgets or tools that you're using at Karadipan. Yeah. So, can you elaborate on those aspects and how are you making learning fun for students? See, the fun element comes from the uh, construction of and the creation and you put a lot of energy behind that creative process. You say that if I have to engage you with a story in Tamil for, let's say, 10 minutes, my storytelling has to be absolutely fantastic. Yeah. You know, so so there you kind of, it's a very, very intense creative process, whether it's the musical element, whether it's the verbal element, whether it's the illustrative elements, every element of that storytelling has to have its richness. But I will actually, because it's relevant to the time, I'll focus on how technology basically enables a, a, the dissemination of this in a very, very uh, effective way. If we are to look at uh, India and, uh, you know, in a sense, you know, this is a good time, while this may seem like a bad time, it is also a good time because you look at the space of adoption of technology that is happening in education, whether it is teachers, whether it is schools. And one of the biggest, uh, you know, most fabulous tools of inclusion is really technology when it comes to education, that even if I'm sitting in a remote space, I can access the knowledge of the world. I have to give you one connectivity, two language literacy at a high level, and three digital literacy. If I enable these three things, you, it, your ecosystem is no longer a limitation. So, you know, uh, you have one Abdul Kalam who kind of was able to go well beyond his ecosystem. You can have a million Abdul Kalams happening simply because I can create, I only need to inspire you. I don't, so the teacher's role changes a little bit from you know teaching or instructional processes to actually more inspirational and enabling processes and i think that not only for karadipa but as more and more people take the content development seriously because this is simply the technology is there but the pedagogical element and how you translate the pedagogical element into a practical process requires intensity and that is where we sometimes often think that you know there's so much edtech happening but most of that does not have the pedagogical and the content element. You know, the tech element is very high. You know, so you have lots of analytics, you have lots of information, but what to do with that information? You know, how do I actually, you know, change this? So that is the big missing element when it comes to uh, ed tech. And that brings us to the close of the conversation. So any closing remarks that you would like us to, like to leave us with? So say for the education sector in particular or the ed tech interventions that are coming in. So any suggestions for them? See, I, through every uh, platform, uh, one of the things that we talk about is that if I enable your language in a very powerful way, not merely at a functional level, but at the level where you can actually read a textbook, uh, read about least common multiple and understand what the concept of it is, not merely the operation of how to do it, that becomes a huge learning, uh, uh, you know, advantage for me. You know, children who can uh, deal with language at not only a functional level, but also at an academic level. You know, they are very efficient learners and they are enthusiastic learners because learning is easy for them. Um, we always talk, say that this is eminently possible if we completely, you know, reframe our English language learning framework. And here it has to happen at the NCRT level to a certain extent. Exactly. And hopefully our results and our outcomes will, uh, you know, take them in that uh, more people in that direction. Uh, from uh, an industry standpoint or from the intervention, the NGOs and the social enterprises that are out there, uh, specifically in education, I would say that, you know, spend a lot of time with pedagogy and content development. 
you know it is not just an idea that you have and then you say that well i am going to put this idea out there you know then what happens is that you have a great idea that gets disproved as a possibility only because you did not actually fill in the uh, blanks you know very well so take the time take the you know effort to actually fill in all those blanks so you know there's technology there's pedagogy there is the tools through which pedagogy operates and take all of those things and then you know make a, a real difference we are very very happy to collaborate with as many people who are passionate out there in order to develop tools for hindi tools for marathi tools for any language because even our learning of these languages is very inadequate you know even a child learning in hindi medium cannot understand the science textbook so so these are gaps in learning that we can we are very happy to collaborate with people who like to work with us thank you so much for joining us mr vishnu it's been a pleasure having you it's been my pleasure to be with all of you namaste and a big thank you to csr box several studies have been conducted by third parties one hour of karadi path gives you the same impact that 8 to 12 hours of conventional language learning in the classroom gives you this is extraordinarily important in india because india being the society it is english is the common language and millions of children study in english without knowing english as the school is uh, marathi medium school i have the habit to uh, talk in uh, my mother tongue that is marathi and so because of the karate path classes uh, i always talk with the students in english i have also uh, improved my vocabulary and the pronunciation very much when we reach our goals it is important to communicate with us with others in english and we go to any country with all the public This kind of transformation is not only possible it is also necessary. A child who has higher language proficiency not only communicates beautifully but also learns all subjects far more easily and far more efficiently.